All right. Now. Well, welcome, everyone. Are we good to go? Yeah. Emma, we're good? All right. Well, welcome to the SoCal Creek Water District meeting for <coughs> July 16th. Um, the first order of business is roll call. And you, I think Everybody's Rochelle is here. Everybody's here. There is no public hearing tonight. So the first item would be the consent agenda. I have nothing to pull. Anybody? Um, well, I just have a question. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, no, on the consent agenda. Never mind. I don't have anything to pull on the consent okay. agenda. Sorry. Anything to pull off consent? No. Okay. We're done. I'll move approving. So I'll second. <laughs> you moved approval of the consent <laughs> agenda? Oh, we forgot second. to ask Bruce. <laughs> no, he already did. Yeah. Yeah. He's on it. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Great. Oral and written communications. Um, is there anybody that wishes to address the board on an item not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, um, no written communications, I don't think, tonight. Um, any board comments? Well, that was my question. It wasn't a yeah. consent agenda. It was, did, our, did we already approve the, going to the meeting, and the water reuse meeting, the national meeting that's being held in San Diego this summer? I do that in se the September meeting. I'm pretty sure. I think we, we did. did. Oh, okay. Well, I I just got a an email yes. about that, and it sounded actually like some people it should could go to meeting. that. It the should national, should national to meeting. The I mean, national I mean, in San Diego yeah, in early in September. Diego. We did approve that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We did. So that was all. But I, it sounds like it is it would be a worthwhile meeting to go to. So you're thinking of potentially going? Well, I didn't say that, but I just said <laughs> okay. it would be a good meeting to go to. <laughs> Anyone else thinking of going? I'm busy then. You're not. What's the week? Is September. September. The aqua meeting is in December. The oh. water reuse it meeting is, is in September. September 20th. First. Like 9, 9 through the 11th or yeah. so. Yeah, 9 through the so 11th. So I could probably go to that. So, there's okay. <coughs> so you're a potential. Not a potential. Not you're not. Okay, no one else necessarily. If you are going thinking to too many. Okay, yeah, September is a, 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 a crazy month, so I don't yeah. think there's any staff going to that. But if you want to confirm so we can get your uh, hotel okay. room and flight and all that, it would be great. It, sooner okay. the better, Carla. Yeah. Okay. And let there's me know. A, let me know, Carla. I might yeah, check my, my schedule. Okay. It's a it's a good meeting. As Carla said, yeah. there's a lot of uh, good information. We just got multiple things going on, so we had. Same one that was in Monterey. It's that's the, <coughs> the state one. This, oh, is, this, this is this is national. national. Yeah. And and Melanie's gone to a national one. You want to talk about it for? Yeah, some? we went last year to the one in Austin to receive our outreach award. It's a little bit more on the technical side. Um, but but very very good information good sessions okay I was just thinking you know as we embark on our right. reuse project that a lot be to know. good to reach out to some people from other states even okay. some of the things I've dealt with already yeah so okay yeah I encourage you to attend all right the next item is the management update yeah so we'll jump into that you want to get <coughs> That went quick. Um, so I just wanted to report out, there was a lot of information about our AMI um, project launch in the conservation report. And um, we're up to about 1,000 registers that have been upgraded by our consultant. And uh, last week, we installed the first base station and repeater and flipped the switch on that. And we're getting, um, we have about 750 registers that are in that primary zone um, for being picked up by that location. And uh, the reception has been really good so far. It's about 99%. We only have four that haven't been picked up that should have been. And so we're working to see what's going on with those. And I think it's mostly programming. So we're working on that. Um, and then today we had training on the Harmony AMI software, <coughs> setting the leak alerts, um, trying to develop our process for how we're going to respond to leak alerts and how we're going to make sure the information gets from um, the field crew into the billing system and, and coordinating those efforts. So things are going pretty well. Um, there's uh, a lot of lot of stuff to figure out. and, and um, How did it seem like the software, was this the interface with 
that the this is client, the, that the this is the reading have? software, no. and then we Office. did get another tutorial on okay. the My Water Advisor. Okay. Um, and how that works and we're thinking we need to probably at least a couple months before we start rolling that out to get everything straight and yeah. make sure that our interface with our billing system's good and we know who's doing what and and start to kind of uh, adjust our, our workflow and our work processes so yeah and I was I was happy to see that you mentioned that the, you found ways to reduce and reuse and recycle the materials. Yeah. Um, what are you? Yeah. Doing? So we have to replace um, all of the meter box lids that are not already composite, and so that includes um, concrete with some steel in <coughs> in there reinforcement and also cast iron, and both of those materials can be recycled through a okay. company in Watsonville. So um, we've set that up. We have bins for those two material streams. Um, the old AMR <coughs> registers that we're replacing are being shipped back to the manufacturer. They want to reclaim those and possibly reuse them. So that's going pretty well. Um, and then we're, and we're shipping those back in um, foam trays that they provide. So you know everything is, is staying out of the landfill, which is really good. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing mm -hmm. that. All right. Yes, sir. So I assume, or at least I, I hope, that for a while we'll continue to do the drive-by reads and then the reads of the AMI actual and then compare them to make sure that they're all correct and, yeah. and the same. When do you see that we would actually transition over to using just the AMI thing and not do the drive-bys anymore? Um, I would think that would be pretty quick. I mean, Billing does a lot of review of, of reads, too, okay. and looking for things that are outside of the norm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can set up within the reading software some parameters for high usage, um, not just leaks, but also high usage outside of certain thresholds. So we'll have that quality control going on as well. Yeah. Okay. And I've talked with members of the public who are very excited about this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they're in the area where that's first going to be installed. But uh, they were so excited, I'm sure that they would be willing, and there's probably others like them, be beta testers for when the software comes out. Yeah, so the customer portal, that's what we were thinking is, um, yeah, reaching out to some people that, you know, live in that area that can kind of test the system yeah, out before we roll it out. Yeah, the understanding it's not going to be perfect, but mm -hmm. they'll, they'll find out how it's not perfect. Yeah, exactly. Right? So it would it'd accelerate the the timeline time frame on when it could go out to the general public mm -hmm. yeah I, just, I had the same experience I think it'll um, be very positively received when it's yeah unfolds. Uh, just to clarify there will be an opportunity for public comment on the management update at, at the end of the management update okay um, okay Do anything right? else for okay then we go to engineering Good evening. Um, I don't have a, I don't want to run through all the list, but uh, we are actively working on the Granite Way well. As you know, we awarded that project, and so we're ramping up for that construction to start. Um, I don't know if Christine's going to mention it, but um, City of Santa Cruz's ASR Belts 12 recovery is underway, and it'll go through the rest of this month. And um, of course, we'll share with you their their data when that comes available um, but we are of course monitoring the the drawdown around that area um, other than that i don't have anything else to add socal drive cast iron main is actively in design so we're ramping up for that any okay. questions questions okay okay thank, thank you. you josh all right christine um, I did want to add that there was a main break on Huntington Drive last week. Um, and also that Carla James, our water quality program co coordinator, has moved on. So um, oh. Tracy is probably reporting on that as, as we're, we're recruiting for that right now, and that closes next week. So. Okay. Questions for Christine? No? Alrighty. And then special projects? Melanie? Well, actually, one thing. Uh, what's the status of the ammonia in our well? 
because I think there's something about it cropping up again or something. Yeah, so we were uh, running the well uh, to try and uh, get to a point where the ammonia <coughs> stabilized. Um, and we didn't, we weren't able to get to that point. It had stopped its pretty much steep increase and was a, was still, still slowly increasing. Um, but we were limited by the level of chlorate in the water. Um, chlorate is a, uh, it's a, a byproduct of uh, disinfection. It's formed in the actual, the, the sodium hypochlorite solution. Um, so we've pretty much stopped that and uh, uh, I'm, I guess Taj hasn't mentioned it, but we're looking at uh, getting some uh, proposals from some firms to, to do a feasibility study on our other options with that well. And we, we did get um, qualification packages about a year ago from uh, three consultants, so we're just asking them to renew those. Um, so we're basically... So a treatment plant, basically? Treatment plant, um, there's other things that we might be able to try by um, diluting the bleach when it's first brought to the site. However, you need to um, use basically distilled water for that and you have to adjust the pH so it's getting a lot more complicated. Um, there's other disinfectants that we might want to, I mean there's chlorine gas, I don't think we want to go there. Um, and then besides that there's, there's ammonia treatment which um, you know, there are a couple of options out there, but none of them are great. No, great as far as cost or effectiveness? Cost, um, probably, well, there's um, uh, RO, of course, and then there's anion exchange, which we were uh, doing for chromium-6, but it takes a big footprint. There's a lot of chemical addition. There's waste products. Um, and then there's also a biological um, method, which is probably the most promising. Um, the, uh, as I hear it, the Division of Drinking Water would consider that basically surface water treatment because we would be introducing um, bacteria that would actually break down the ammonia. So we would be have to operate under the surface water treatment rule, which means we would need contact time after disinfection before it's distributed, which means a, probably a big tank, which, so. Okay, yes. it's complicated. Yes. <laughs> complicated. It's like okay. a mini fiefdom in there <laughs> eventually. Excuse me? It sounds it's like it could be a mini fiefdom eventually with all the different treatment. Problems. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, none of our other wells act like this. It's, it's pretty much a mystery why the levels just aren't stable uh, because the ammonia is in all of the pure, Purissima wells to some level, but they're, they're stable. Also kind of a mystery why Belts 12 isn't showing any of this and they're so close to each other. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <coughs> and the well is constructed very similarly. Yes. So. yes. Well, keep us posted if you would. Okay, I will. Thank you. So Melanie, you're next. Yeah, I don't have much. I have a couple items later on in the agenda. Just wanted to focus um, the image on the screen is the postcard that got sent out to um, residents in the Santa Cruz Mid-County Groundwater Basin. I received one of those postcards um, and just wanted to highlight that the draft groundwater sustainability plan um, was put out on Friday. It will be presented to the MGA on, on Thursday. Uh, I think this is a, another milestone, lots, lots of milestones this month. This one in particular, since the basin is in critical overdraft, uh, it's a nice regional collaboration to be um, getting to this uh, milestone. In addition, just wanted to um, state that the, uh, several of us went out to Washington, D.C. last month and met with many representatives to talk about, uh, again, the dire situation of our groundwater basin, the community water plan, and the Pure Water SoCal project. And I'll just <coughs> say about that trip that I thought, you know, we learned a lot and, and I think it was really helpful. And, you know, the main goal is just to to try and save our customers money. So we're, we're hopeful that we'll, it'll improve our chances for grants and, loan, and low interest loans. So I think it's worth the effort. To add to that, I went too. Um, I think we got a lot of sympathy. I mean, our, our story is pretty compelling. The difficulty is that a lot of these programs have very rigid qualifications and ratings and, and 
point schemes that they can't just you know turn around and say, okay, well, we'll make an exception for you. So uh, it's still difficult. Uh, yeah. Yep, just because we're small. We're small, but we have a big a problem. Big problem. Yep. <coughs> thank, I want to thank everyone who went, direct, Director Daniels and Lahu and the staff, because that, that was a whirlwind trip. Hmm. Uh, it's a burnout type trip. So thanks, thanks for doing that. All right, and uh, so, yes, Leslie. So I just wanted to let, uh, remind everyone that our fiscal year began July 1st, so happy fiscal new year. <laughs> um, our final audit field work has been uh, scheduled for October 16th through 18th, and we are working now to open up the Socrata Open Finance Portal, which will be a portal on our, uh, that our customer can access from our website that will allow them to see the warrants, um, some graphs and charts, uh, how we're performing against our budget, how much we've spent, how much we've brought in, that type of thing. So it's kind of a, a financial transparency website that will be available to our customers. Um, and we're hoping to roll that out here this summer. Um, and then we do have a Finance and Administrative Services Committee meeting on July 22nd, which is Monday. And then I also want to point out, uh, kind of piggybacking on, on Melanie's comment about our critical groundwater basin, that we have entered our summer um, watering season, so we are getting a lot of calls from customers regarding their bills. Um, mm. And just a reminder that that rate structure was predicated on the critical groundwater situation that we have. We can supply each account with about six units of water. That's tier one. Anything in excess of that is not sustainable, and that's what's causing that higher tier for tier two. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <coughs> thank you. No questions for you? Okay. And I don't have anything to add to my report unless anyone has any questions. No, are you getting some getting people busy applying? again. <laughs> getting people applying for the position. Yeah, we're we're moving forward, so Okay. No, thanks. Questions for Tracy? Okay. And Ron. Yeah, so I'll I'll just comment on one item. It caught my eye, saltwater intrusion or in uh, San Jose. You don't think of that, but it also seeps in from the bay and they've been fighting this for years they they pushed it back but uh in the last couple of years it made a big leap forward almost back to where it was originally and uh probably because of that uh the current mayor uh, has this quote up here and i'll just read it the combination of droughts and floods has given rise to a process known as uh, saltwater intrusion and he can refers to it as the city's greatest climate threat and it goes on to say uh, he's sounding the alarm about a drinking water crisis that no one knows how to fix, uh, but they're going to try, and I think we're on that same path to, to fight it and combat it too. So we're not alone, obviously. Okay. All right. Any questions from anyone? So, so this would be the time if anyone from the public has question, uh, comments, public comment on the management update. Yeah, and we have two customers here that wanted to specifically comment about uh, Leslie's portion of the thing regarding rates. So finance. Finance. So you, you can come on up now. This would be your time. You have three minutes. So I just want to let you know. Thank you. Can you hear me? You can go like this. Uh, I want to uh, commend you on the uh, on your uh, your work on getting us you know drinkable grant um, water and sorry. <laughs> and um, you know all your efforts to improve our water system but I do um, have an issue with the pricing um, there's a lot of people who are getting huge bills on our water and um, it, the problem is you're charging each house the same rate the so six units go to each house and houses don't use water people use water and the people are not being counted. I know it's, it's going to be difficult to get people counted, but I've actually brought this issue up before, and we haven't had any, anything done about it. There's, you know, I have a, a, a number of people living in our house, and I've inquired before about my bill. They've said, oh, you're really conservative for the amount of people you have in your house. But, but yet I'm still charged over because it goes into the tier 
the, uh, onto the tier process that charges an exorbitant amount of money for for the next tier. It's it's ridiculous. And so I I really I'm hoping you guys will do something about that because I I can't do anything about it. And there's a lot of people are very concerned about getting two hundred and some odd dollars water bills. And if it's it's not the groundwater either the the salt water intrusion. <laughs> When I was in Apt, uh, I mean uh, Los Osos, we had the same problem, and our bills never went up this high. So I don't know what's going on, but I would really like this to be addressed. Thank you. Is there anyone else on this item? Okay. Anyone else on the management update? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I will just say that the rate increases are based 9% increase per year for the next five years solely to pay for Pure Water SoCal project. That's what's driving this. And it's because uh, the grants, if you get them, if the project does go through, are reimbursement grants. So that's what this is all about, make it clear. Um, I would like, on the management report, I would like to um, just respond to Ms. Shoemaker's uh, report that several of you went to Washington, D.C. This is not the first trip, and I feel it's a great disservice to your rate payers because you're not only making trips that are expensive back to Washington, D.C. to basically glad hand people hoping to get a $20 million grant, but you're also now you've paid $90,000 for over the two years to pay a lobbyist back there to do that very work for you, $90,000. So um, I think that needs to be clear to your ratepayers. I would also like to um, point out that uh, Mr. Duncan's um, extensive report about saltwater intrusion in the Bay and Mayor Licardo's comments really have nothing to do with what's here. Your SkyTem report in the memo said, by and large, the groundwater levels in the project area have recovered. And your um, monitoring well levels also show that, by and large, there are some problematic areas. But the recent monitoring, uh, the mod modeling done by Montgomery and Associates have shown that if pure water SoCal injection goes in, and the city of Santa Cruz at aquifer storage recharge programs also occur. The groundwater, uh, it, you would basically be competing with each other for groundwater recharge capacity. And in fact, their hydrologist said that groundwater recharge levels could reach ground surface levels if the two projects go on concurrently. That's not responsible. You're costing your ratepayers huge amounts of money and this project is not needed. I want to um, address um, Mr. DeFore's um, report about um, private well monitoring. Nothing in the EIR for the Pure Water SoCal project discusses the two uh, privately uh, owned mutual companies not far away, just on the other side of the freeway from the Twin Lakes Church project injection well. And I, I want to know if you are monitoring those two wells for the impacts of the recent um, uh, injection well test that tra transpired at Twin Lakes Church. Thank you. President LeHue, I'll just note that. Well, I think go ahead and address some of the misinformation. Well, there, I just so. going to say simply, there's much mis incorrect and misinformation just right. reported out. So I'll leave it at that. Excuse me, there is. That's just I would like that. No, there's a lot. And so, I mean, if people just want to get the real report, they should look at the actual hydrologist report. Yeah. And the predictions of where we would be without having a project. So. Um, it's absolutely essential. This is why all of the entities, the city and the county and the MGA have all worked together to say that we need this. So anyway, I've just, you know, I, I want to make sure for anyone who's listening on TV or something that they know that there's a lot of incorrect information in those statements. Please back it 
In fact, I'd like to go f a little further and say that the MGA's testing, including the city's own tests, have shown that the city's aquifer storage and retrieval by itself will damage the basin, and it's required to have the pure water to come along with it to allow things to be sustainable. Otherwise, it's not sustainable at all. Okay. So without so that, it's going to fail. The state will come and take over this entire basin. So. Anyway, we'll move on to the MGA and GSP advisory committee meetings, oral report. Um, hasn't been an MGA meeting. Uh, there will be one this Thursday right. um, at Simpkins at 6, but do um, you want to report anything from GSP? Well, the, the ground Groundwater Sustainability Plan Advisory Committee had its final meeting. I think it was actually last month. And um, there were 20 meetings in all. And at the end, uh, there was there was agreement that the the plan would lead to sustainability, and and the recommendations were unanimous with you know with people supporting it who were on the committee. So it was quite a journey, um, and uh, I learned a lot from it, and I'm sh I'm sure everyone on the on the committee did as well, and. Uh, we started off not, uh, you know, not not being real efficient, but at the end, I think we we got to where well we did get to where we needed to get to. So I'm looking forward to uh, the meeting on Thursday at Simpkins at seven o'clock, where that's going to be presented to the MGA. Yes, and there will be a public comment period for 60 days starting last Friday, I think. And then I'm correct, yeah. I don't know if this is the time or not, but there's also um, two opportunities for the public to to in, engage in the two additional opportunities for the public to engage in this. Right. And that's um, Saturday and Monday. Is that correct? I think it's this Saturday, Melanie. Do you recall? I'm going to pull it up right now. It's uh, Saturday from 10 to noon at the Community Foundation, right. and then Monday evening at Simpkin Center. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So great. Um, all right. Any public comment on that item? Well, one thing is to mention that the plan itself is now online so people can right. go and start looking at it. Right. So that's where the comments, written comments are going to be the most effective probably to make it as good a plan as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. District Council. I don't have anything to report in open session. Most, most of my time has been spent on the items that are coming up in closed session. Okay. And so we'll go to administrative business. There's uh, item 6.1, which is conditional and unconditional will serves. All right, so both these projects exceed one acre foot of demand. That's why you're seeing them. Um, they're both little minor land divisions with main extensions and fire hydrants. They're both very similar actually in nature. Um, we uh, know that the unconditional 6.1.2 is getting ready to start construction in the next month. The other one I'm not sure when that's going to ever um, happen, but they're basically coming back for a conditional. You've seen, um, I think, both of these projects before. They're long-standing projects that have just not gotten traction. Any questions? Okay. thought I recognized the addresses. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you. Um, any public comment on this item? Okay. Seeing none. Any motions? I'll move to approve. Okay. Yeah. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Opposed. Okay. Thank you. Um, we move to item 6.2. Um, this is something that I, I actually I meant to thank you for your service on um, on the MGA, um, the planning committee. So really appreciate that. Um, but now a lot of effort went into this item. So I don't know, is that? Yeah, uh, Director Christensen and uh, Director Jaffe and, and Director uh, Lather were all three attending the Santa Cruz uh, City Council meeting on June 25th regarding the agreement with uh, between Soquel Creek Water District and the city regarding obtaining the fluent and building the tertiary plant down there. 
uh, to facilitate uh, pure water, the Pure Water Soquel project. Before I dive into it, though, I was struck by um, the California 2000 plan update, which they just sent out today, and the secretary uh, of uh, the state there of natural resources, he opens up his letter and says, water management in California is a grand exercise in partnerships. And I just thought that rung true with this partnership. And I believe in those partnerships, we can solve these bigger issues, whether it's uh, homelessness or water or whatnot, and we have to, you know, work together to do that. And the, you know, the city of Santa Cruz, I don't think they, maybe they had one or two um, other votes that were more than four or three, but this was unanimous, not just by the city of uh, council, seven zero in favor of the agreement to provide us uh, treated affluent so we can uh, treat it further and purify it but also uh, to build our facility down there um, at no cost on the, on the property at the wastewater treatment facility. The, um, not only did the city council approve it 7-0, but the water commission approved it 5-0, or whatever their numbers are, I forget how many, I think they got seven. And then so did the public works and transportation committee. So all the way through the city, we had unanimous votes in support of this partnership. And it's through these p partnerships that we do, you know, bring greater value for our customers. On top of that, as it's outlined in the memo, uh, there were 29 letters sent to the uh, city council. And some of them, I think, were copied to this board also. They're in the packet. 27 of those letters or emails were in support of the agreement, urging the city council and, the, and this board to, to move forward with it, which they did. Um, you know, I'm a believer in process, and I think what makes agreements like this successful, we didn't go in through it with a positional thing, like how much can we get from Santa Cruz, and uh, neither did they take that approach with us. It was like, what are your interests? What do you need? What, what's, what's the value to, to you over there? And so by doing that, you can get a greater, greater piece of the pie, so to speak. Um, you know, I will note that it's in compliance with all the uh, uh, California uh, Environmental Quality Act uh, requirements and that sort of thing, and that's part of the resolution. Um, so, yeah, it was, um, I think, a, uh, a special moment recognizing how, where these agencies have been and, and how far we've come together. And it's not just the three directors that were there that night, but, you know, community members, staffs, and everybody working together to get this. and. Um, you know, we're on to the next phase already. Then I got a call from their water director. All right, let's not bask in this. Let's move forward. I mean, literally that quick. And right. It's like, all right, let's do it. Let's go. And I want to thank um, you and all the staff that met over and over again with with the people with the staff of the city and Bob mm -hmm. and also all of all of us worked talking to city council people and trying to educate when we could. So it was real. If there's that, if this was the in this together. Yeah. Um, idea. I feel like that was really a team approach, and yeah. so really thank you very much. Thank you, and you know, and I'll I'll echo that out to the city of Santa Cruz. I mean, yeah. they, you know, they were like, well, can we should we push this off till August and and whatnot? This is you know, and we said it's important, and they go, we recognize it's important. Let's let's do the work we need to do, and we came together. I think on a on a really good agreement because it does, yeah. you know. Uh, accomplish a lot of the, the needs of, of each agency and therefore our customers. So what we're asking the board tonight is uh, by motion and roll call to approve uh, resolution 1914 authorizing the district's board president to execute the agreement between Soquel Creek Water District and the city of Santa Cruz for source water design and con uh, construction and startup of the tertiary treatment facility component of the Pure Water Soquel project. Thank you. Um, any public comment on this item? Thank you. Becky Steinbrenner, resident of Aptos. Let's be clear about what happened in this process. To say that this document, this agreement, was unanimously approved by the City Water Commission and the City Public Works and Transportation Commission is not quite true because the version of this document that both of those commissions saw was a 13-page vague and poorly worded document. And those are the words of um, 
some of the legal officials uh, who are part of the City Water Commission. So because Mr. Duncan came to that Water Commission meeting and impressed upon them the importance of shoving it through very quickly before the uh, City Council went on one month break because every month uh, delay was going to cost the ratepayers $400,000 for the project. Um, they fe felt that it was incumbent upon them to cooperate and to try to work with the district to save the money. It was not the document that that commission saw that was approved by the city council. It's a much better document. And that was not uh, my issue for asking the city council to pull it from the consent agenda, which is supposed to be reserved for uh, non-controversial issues. This certainly is not that. And uh, thankfully, Councilman Crone did pull it from the consent agenda. And um, so it did receive some public discussion, and I was happy for that. I was pretty amazed to see all of the staff that came from the district to be there that day. That was a very expensive day for the district to be there. But um, I'm glad that the district was well represented and uh, the comments from Rotary and those people. I take um, exception to, again, having a letter in your packet for this, um, this purpose from uh, Craig Wilson. Um, it, it, the copy, I don't see it in the copy that I got in the hard copy I picked up today, but it is in the online copy. It isn't even addressed to the, to the board, but it's in your communication packet, so I don't quite understand that. And again, I think you're using his public respected tr stature to try to sell your project. Um, so again, I'm, um, you're, you're moving through with it, and I want to just say that after that city council meeting, I talked with Water Commissioner Doug Engfer, who was one of the subcommittee of three that helped recraft that 13-page doc, document that went to a 19-page document. It was his understanding that if you didn't get that agreement, you would have no project because you would have no grants. I had to fill him in and let him know that your rate structure is supporting the project regardless of the grants. And that's what you decided on November 16th. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, November 6th, correction. Um, just briefly, just wanted to mention that um, the city council members, one of them mentioned that this kind of working together, it, it was a historic agreement, you know? So um, it was kind of really neat to see, um, you know, who proposed approving it and that they all put in their their appreciation for it and, that, and their approval of it. So anyway. I'll make a motion. I will second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Uh, and I'll wait, roll, roll, call. roll call. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Director Maynard? Yes. Vice President Daniel? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President LeHue? Yes. Well All done, right. everybody. Thank you. Um, the next item is to consider, consider scopes of work for um, professional consulting services re related to Pure Water. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and introduce this item and um, I'm available for questions. Item 6.3 is a continuance of some additional scopes of work that SoCal Creek Water District would like to continue through fiscal year 2019-2020 for uh, furthering the Pure Water Soap Health Program. For um, just for a couple of our new audience members, uh, thank you for coming tonight. Um, just a little preface: the Pure Water Soak Health Project is a project that would uh, combat seawater intrusion. It's our groundwater replenishment project. It is estimated to cost about ninety million dollars, and that is why we are actively seeking uh, low interest loans and grants to help uh, help with our ratepayers. Um, and with that, this year for uh, us to stay on schedule to implement the project and be online by twenty twenty. Two, uh, we do have about $15 million in this approved budget that we are um, anticipating in spending to continue the design, development, um, and steps necessary so that we can um, shoot for breaking ground in 2020. With that, the two scopes of works that we have on this item tonight is for legal uh, legal support services for the CEQA litigation. We do have Best, Best and Krieger. Um, their services are estimated to be about $111,000. Um, that is estimated due to um, 
some of the extra effort that has been required uh, uh, to um, defend this litigation at this point. There have been, um, as you know, uh, several uh, TROs, which are the temporary restraining orders that we've had to go to court, and of course, um, you know, those those were successful. They didn't go anywhere. But as we go forward um, on this project, we uh, are looking to get through this part with um, with our district council and with BBK. And then the second item is uh, uh, extension of services for Brown and Caldwell, who are our program manager and our owner's advisor. Uh, for this contract this year, their work uh, will primarily focus on uh, three primary tasks. The first one is continued program management services. Um, Ron and I and Tracy have just met with um, another nearby agency to talk about their staffing and resources and how they're managing their program. I, I feel and uh, continue to feel that we do it on a very lean basis from a staff level, knowing that you know once this project is done, we may not need th that, that, that amount of resources in-house, so we do look to um, our program management team to assist with us as we continue to move forward with that. They're also on board for the second bucket, which is um, continued technical advisor, owner advisor. As we're going forward with this district project and as we go into the next item, which is the procurement for uh, design build teams for the conveyance, the treatment, and, and then the future operations, they are, again, providing a lot of owners, advisors, assistance on that. As we go forward with developing that design, doing cost validations, um, they'll be working uh, side by side with district staff. And then the third item um, with this budget item is uh, data collection. As we're going forward and advancing some of the preliminary design work, we have identified that collection of data not only will assist with some of the preliminary design efforts, but also with the permitting aspects that are uh, fully underway at this point with the project. So with that item for Brown and Caldwell, and I do have Anoop Shaw, who is our program manager here, if there's specific questions, that item is presented in um, the attachment as having an optional task. That optional task is to further the design. Um, in last fiscal year budget, Brown and Caldwell did develop a basis of design report, which sets kind of the design criteria, um, and uh, it continues to build upon the project description as described in the EIR. We do have an optional task that we'll be working with um, ourselves, staff, uh, BC and the design build firm to see if there's some additional design work that we may want to do to help further that effort to stay on our um, our, our schedule. So the um, contract amount for Brown, Brown and Caldwell for this fiscal year is anywhere between 2.5 and 3.7 million dollars depending on if we go ahead and go with that optional task. In total for this item here, this is about 16 to 20 percent of the um, budget that we have for this year just as kind of a um, perspective in terms of the level of effort um, that these two contracts uh, will be for the budget this year and uh, we're here to answer any questions okay any public comment on this item well, I just had a question on the last item when are most of the staff members that were there that evening on salary and don't get paid extra for being there? On uh, the 25th? Yeah. Uh, most of them. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Free. Hi, my name is Becky Steinbrunner, and I am bringing legal action on behalf of public benefit. Um, against the district because of what I see as some very critical flaws and violations of CEQA law regarding the EIR and the process. I am sorry to cost your ratepayers this money, but I'm doing it on behalf of the public and I'm not the only one who has complained as Mr. Basso told the city council. I'm not the only one filing complaints I have had to take this action in pro per because Water for Santa Cruz that wanted to take the action with legal assistance could not afford the $100,000 for legal assistance. So that's why it appears I am the only one 
but I'm not the only one. I'm representing the public as a citizen. I want to show you this graphic again. <laughs> Will pure water SoCal float <laughs> in Santa Cruz, in SoCal? And I think you should really take a good look at the gauge of public sentiment out there. There are many people who do not want this project for various reasons. Your ratepayers are now looking at huge rate increases to fund it. They've not been told in the material that was mailed out to them regarding the rate increase that it was to pay for Pure Waters Hotel that was not made public until the February 19th public hearing regarding the rate increases. Many people have a lot of concerns about the low-level chronic exposure to endocrine disruptors that Dr. Jude Todd brought before you in papers, but you excluded from your minutes. That's coming out as I'm looking at your material in the administrative record. Many people are against this project. You're looking at a pathway similar to what the desal plant faced. I suggest that you hold off on spending yet more money on this until you really gauge your public. And according to the Best Best in Krieger 2013, October 28th um, analysis of um, water rights, you have the ability to apply independently of the city of Santa Cruz for water rights on the San Lorenzo River from November 1st through May 31st. This is new water, as Best Best and Krieger calls it. Yeah, you've not explored that. So why don't you hold off on spending millions of dollars and potentially contaminating the aquifer, not giving anyone a vote, and, and take a better look at what people are thinking, what your ratepayers are thinking, and I wanna let you know the vote is coming. We're, we've formed an initiative process There was one piece of accurate information that she's costing our, not a customer and costing our customers money. Yeah, I think Mr. Basso has a few words. Yeah, I'll my, my comment was she's the only person who filed a complaint about okay. this project. She is the only person who has filed a legal complaint about this project. Okay. And it's not just this contract that we're looking at for B and B and K, which is $111,000. But if you look back earlier in our agenda where we approved the warrants, there was a three payments to BB&K that totaled over $40,000. So that means $150,000 just for you know what we're seeing tonight. That's $20 per account. So you go through every, all of our wow. 15,000 accounts, every one of them is being part, charged $20 for the opposition of one person. And if that person succeeds, th if person. that person succeeds, then this basin will not be sustainable we'll have to report to the state board that we are not sustainable, and they have said, someone that's not sustainable, they will come in and take over the basin. And, and what they will do is ration the basin. They won't try and fix things. They'll just cut everyone back down to where it's safe again, which would be the six units that we're talking about. Yeah. And then the analysis long, a long ago was that the cost of water would go way up. Yes. Right. And, and it means that the city's plans would not happen either because this basin would be locked down. They couldn't put water in and take it back out in drought years. So anyway, this person is just going to make the entire region fail if that happens. I'd like to add a, a comment to um, the, you know, we did a survey a while back about using this type of uh, purified water and recharging in the basin. And 77% of our customers uh, said they were for it after learning more about it. And the city of Santa Cruz recently did a survey. We shared part of that with you because it had some AMI type stuff, but I'm not sure I highlighted that. Just uh, for the purified water and recharge, they, uh, the, there was over 70% of the people said they favor that type of project. And using that uh, water also, recycled water for irrigation, there was a 90%. So if you average those two, it was in the high 80s that um, the public supported this type of effort re using recycled water. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to refer people who want to investigate whether there's river water to be had to go to the uh, Sustainable Groundwater uh, Plan Advisory Committee uh, agendas and minutes. And it clearly shows that with climate change, 
the amount of water in San Lorenzo River is going to go down. And it actually has elevated climate change uh, on even more on Santa Cruz's uh, water department's uh, list of things that they have to um, learn more about. And they know a lot already, but take into account in their plans for the future. So it's it's in my opinion, wishful thinking that there's enough water in the future in San Lorenzo River for everyone. And the water director has said that there isn't the water for right. river. Yeah. Okay. So any, no one else to speak? So um, any motions on the floor? I would make, uh, how many motions are there? There's two. Well, I would like to, to discuss yeah, a discussion. So could you explain to me the additional um, optional, item, stuff. optional stuff and timetable and in specifically whether uh, when the optional work needs to begin to keep schedules. Thank you for that question. Um, so the, the, the overall schedule as uh, the board's desire and what the grant uh, timeline, they seem to uh, combine and we are looking at December 2022 timeframe to have the project completed. Mm -hmm. And then if we work backwards from that December 2022 timeline, uh, the permitting efforts uh, lead become the critical path to go through di division of drinking water for them to feel comfortable with the processes, uh, regional water quality control board. So that's about a uh, two year process that we believe. So that puts us uh, uh, somewhere in the 2020 timeframe. And as we are working towards right now to bring the design builders on board to procure them, that in itself starts crunching the time in the front end. So right now we are evaluating whether there's enough time after the design builder comes on board for them to finish the design um, between well, probably February, March timeframe until August, September timeframe to give you uh, design certainty as well as price certainty. And what we are going to be doing in this procurement process is seek feedback from the design builders where they need support, uh, what would enable them to have a greater success in the critical time that's in between February, March until August, September. So as we go through the procurement process, solicit that feedback from the various design builders that are interested in this project, that will set the stage for what level of effort we as a program team and the staff need to provide. Uh, some of those elements could be you know, electrical feed for the new advanced water purification facility. Irrespective of which design builder comes on board, they will need electrical power. So if that's one item that uh, they feel we should uh, advance further, then district would authorize us to design for that electrical feed coming into the facility. Rest of the items can be left over to design builder. So it's still to be, uh, we want to use it in a more collaborative approach, do only things that are necessary, Everything else we can leave it for the design builder, so we are not duplicating effort. We are not uh, spending uh, money where um, it would be redundant. So that's sort of the general approach. So over next, um, I would say three to four months, we'll get a better idea of where uh, some of those optional tasks need to advance. There may be a possibility that we don't need to touch any of those optional tasks, and we can leave those alone. So uh, I hope that uh, addresses. And yeah, that was one of the questions I had too, and whether they have a graphic uh, time timetable to follow, and so that we can see when some deadlines or some uh, expected completion times were either in danger of not being completed or um, needed more resources in order to be completed. Because the other question I had about that was whether what the your pro I had. I wasn't clear on how the process for understanding cost controls on this because mm -hmm. these are up to a certain uh, price and yeah. it'd be really great if it were less, of course, but but it's also conceivable due to some other you know, things that will be coming up that some things will have to, will, will need more resources to um, to be completed on a timely basis. So I was wondering how that uh, the controls and the reporting of that to the, to the board and to the managers would be actuated. 
Absolutely, if I may answer sure. some of that um, aspect. So a lot of these uh, program management staff support services, we are responding to the external needs. Let's say re the regulators come back and say, oh, we need this additional information or consultations with the city as we are looking at tertiary facility design if they need additional information. So we, we provide that uh, additional support analysis. Um, I, if I may speak in terms of the last year's authorized budget, if you recall, we had three potential BODR options and district and the city ended up making timely decisions so we didn't have to spend any money on the two optional BODRs. We just focused on BODR being basis of design report only on the Shannon Clear site. Uh, something similar to that effect, so not only we did not spend uh, the two optional BODR effort, um, the level of service needed in the last year, we were very efficient that uh, we actually did not spend the money up to the contract uh, ceiling. So we, we, are sp we came in under and uh, that uh, by a, a decent amount. And, and what we are planning to do over here, this is our best estimate at this point of where the efforts might be. And if you're interested, we can, uh, in the next board meeting or one, one of the future meetings, I can bring a schedule that shows when the critical decision points are and how we anticipate uh, the permitting process to move forward. That would be good to see. I, I might appreciate, appreciate nice. that. Absolutely, yeah. And so the optional tasks wouldn't actually happen immediately. They would be sometime in the, did I hear four month time frame or? Yeah, uh, three to four months time frame, and okay. for each and every optional task, uh, it may not be authorized as a s the entire chunk. It may be develop a small scope of work that hasn't been identified, and against that scope of work, there would be authorization and so on and so forth. So as the need arises on as needed basis, we develop a small scope of work, seek authorization, and then proceed. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I will make the two motions again. I will second. Uh, for the second. for the second item, just for clarification, there was a range, so I just wanted to make sure that the Been purchase order amount. Right, but it, oh, so whether it in, could include the optional task? Right. I would say, what do you think? Go ahead and yeah, authorize it, because including it, if we don't need it, we don't spend it, and it can, stays in the. Okay, okay. my second agrees with that. Would you? There is a, it is in there to include right. optional yes. tasks. Yes, right. Would, would you be willing to amend that uh, that we get, say, quarterly reports? Or I'm sure you're probably going to do that anyway, but I'd like to formalize it on, on just where we sure. stand. I'd be glad to make that uh, addition. Yeah. Are on how much of the option. Where do we stand? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Regarding right. the option portion, you mean? On the option mm -hmm. portion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Anoop. Why don't you um, just stay right there? <laughs> let's see. Back up. 6.4. This is uh, RFQs now for contracts. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and continue to discuss the Pure Water SoCal project, and I've asked Anoop to stay up here as well. Um, item 6.4 is. Um, two separate requests for qualifications that the district staff is asking the board to authorize issuance of. The first one, I'll talk about them each and separately, and then um, Anoop, feel free to, to, to chime in. Um, the first one is for the design build services for treatment. The district board has already authorized us uh, to release the request for qualifications for the conveyance portion of the project. The treatment project, or what we call the treatment project, is really the two projects. One is the tertiary treatment facility at the City of Santa Cruz's wastewater treatment facility. The tertiary will be co-located down there. And then the second part of the treatment project is the advanced water purification facility. That's the reverse osmosis UV advanced oxidation at the Shannon Clear site, which is centrally located between the city of Santa Cruz and SoCal Creek Water District. The RFQ um, would be issued for a design build team. So they would uh, go out again. This is the alternative delivery model that the district board um, had selected to, to fit, fit well in terms of best value and time to meet the project to be online by the end of 2022, where a design build team would come together and uh, we would go through a two-step process 
first we would go out with a request for qualifications, solicit statements of qualifications and shortlist uh, for up to five firms to then um, be asked to propose a proposal, a full proposal um, that then we would um, select uh, and confirm and, and contract with a design build team. Um, anything on, else on that one? That sounds good. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and set up the second one and then you guys can ask questions. The second uh, request for qualifications is for the operations and maintenance. Um, just as a refresher for, for everybody, um, the tertiary treatment facility will be uh, working with the city of Santa Cruz to operate that. Uh, the project agreement that was just a, a approved and authorized set forth uh, two additional agreements that we will be working on, the land lease for the tertiary treatment as well as the operations and maintenance with the city staff. For the advanced water purification facility, um, that is, you know, uh, we're, we're more focused and we have the strength and the resources and staffing to do um, the seawater intrusion prevention wells and the conveyance pipeline. But specifically for the treatment, we're looking at hiring a third party uh, contract operating firm to, to do that for us. And that's what they call the OMAR or operation, operator and maintenance at risk. And um, when we're procuring that, and we've been working with um, Brown and Caldwell, and again, this is something that we've talked about with the board at a previous workshop, we'd like to hire um, a firm to come on during the initial design phase. We don't want to turn over a facility that we all feel is great, the design is great, and we turn it over to, to, some, to a firm and it's not really exactly what they want. So we want to bring them on early. We want to have them work with us. So this early phase really is about owner's advisory in terms of the O&M. And um, we'd like to procure that through uh, the request for qualifications. In this method, what we'll be doing is putting out the RFQ, having firms solicit their, um, their statement of qualifications, and then we'll be reviewing those and shortlisting uh, firms that then during the process of selecting a design build team, they can look at that shortlisted uh, group of, of OMAR firms that they may want to tee up with so that at the end, um, those two procurements would, would conclude at the same time. Do you want, want to state anything? No, I, I think you, you summarized it well. Uh, the whole idea behind uh, OMAR procurement right now is to extend that collaboration aspect by bringing a long-term operator on board right now, you have ability to influence the design, to seek efficiency, to control the cost down the road. And uh, just having your design builder and the operator working together will pay dividends down the road because uh, in the design they have taken into consideration, instead of something having manual, if it's automated, you can save this much uh, you know, operators' time, so and so forth. So those concepts will pay dividends. So that's why we're working towards procuring the o uh, operator even at this point. So, yeah. yeah. I think uh, when we were talking about how we were, would be setting up this collaborative uh, approach, it really was about ensuring the life cycle cost and the, the, the annual cost or the cost of water is always kind of part of this initial part, which right now we're focused on with the, with the uh, treatment project, the capital cost. What's the capital cost? And if we try and do something just with the capital cost lens and we're not thinking long term, we may not be thinking about the whole project holistically. Provide best value over best time. Best value. Best value over time. So um, what we are asking the board tonight is to um, as outlined in the board memo, um, we would like to be releasing these RFQs. We do have a date in here, just in terms of the treatment project RFQ going out July 19th. We still are working on just a couple extra things within that package, so that may be delayed a couple days. We'll, we'll keep, it, keep people posted on our website, as well as the date for the OMAR, but our intent is to release these this summer. We would like uh, to establish a selection committee and go forward with this with the intent that um, by the end of the year, all three of these contracts, the conveyance, the treatment, and the OMAR would all be, uh, would all, we'd all be on our way to secure for the next year. 
questions? A couple questions. Please. So, since the city's a critical partner in the in the tertiary treatment facility, um, are they involved with the, this process? Yes, they will be. Um, we've been talking with staff in terms of being on the selection committee for the treatment project. Okay. And then, um, in terms of the the Omar, at what point will we have input into the design? In terms of uh, one thing that's extremely important to me is 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 safety, which I'm sure it's the same with all the all the directors, all the customers, the staff, et cetera. So, at what point will the where there'll be an opportunity to to send the message of redundancy, you know, things that that might increase costs, but will make it safer. If if I may, yeah. yeah. So the the concern about the quality and the safety, uh, I think that's going to be paramount across the board. So the, this entire design process is going to be very much collaborative. Um, so design builder would come up and say in order to meet this division of drinking water, um, you know, portable reuse criteria, this is the process we recommend, mm -hmm. and here's the cost. And, and you get to see that, district will get to see that, and you can say, oh, on these particular areas, we want to be doubly robust. Gotcha. And, and you, you provide that input, and they'll take that into consideration and build that in. So it's uh, very much open uh, uh, collaboration uh, until that point. There is a milestone that's called Guaranteed Maximum Price, GMP. Um, so leading up to that, the design is very much uh, open discussion. Uh, once you reach GMP, uh, then they have a pretty good solid design in hand. They can start building. Even at that point, if you desire, you could make changes. You just you know pay that extra premium for whatever being added. Sure. So the entire process in, in a lot of regards uh, geared towards that. And what you describe about safety, it's not only the staff, the board, and regional water quality control board, division of drinking water, everybody would be looking at uh, ensuring the quality. So yeah, I think it's paramount. And GMP is? A guaranteed maximum price, yeah. 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 Anybody else? Or do you have to have like a, a, a cheat sheet? <laughs> <laughs> I know, several of them. I just know Dr. Lee is always like, what's that acronym? I know, I know. <laughs> and and it's, it's even in, you know, we just did a, a little meeting of you know evaluating the potential conveyance part of the structure like the same kind of a of a of a look at qualifications and there were a few acronyms i had to like what was that again <laughs> you know <laughs> so um anyway um other thoughts questions i'm i'm um, uh, so how many um, evaluation committees are you going to try to put together then is that we'd like to we'd like to at least uh, set two more one for the Omar and one for the treatment project okay. well I'm just getting my feet wet I'm happy to help if you do, do that again it's, it's, it's a too. lot of reading but you too I'm willing anybody else well, we need to go to the public too. No, I know. Yeah. just thinking but but we're talking, think, be thinking about we may want to um, I'll just in terms of the, the possible board actions, I know you're going to open it up to the public, but number five does say designate up to two directors who may be on the review and selection committee. And since we have two, you may want to um, maybe authorize Ron to help establish those committees um, if, if you guys want to kind of think about which ones you want to be on. Okay. Um. So I was wondering, um, I just have one other question is, uh, what did uh, the Pure Water Monterey how do they go about this kind of a process? Pure Water Monterey actually was a traditional design bit build. So they went ahead and, um, and, the, and they, from what I gather, they originally were gonna go ahead and do this progressive design build and they ended up doing traditional design bid build because of the way that their funding stream came in. No other questions, then any members of the public wish to make a comment on this item?
Thank you. Good evening, Becky Steinbrenner. I'm very happy to hear the Brown and Caldwell consultants say that uh, redundancy and safety in this project would be uh, given highest priority. And Dr. Jaffe, thank you for confirming that concern. It is a huge concern. Um, I just want to point out to you that this is pretty much the conversation your board had on May 29th, 2018 in one of your six special board meetings that were not uh, recorded and for which there are very few notes, minutes. But I recorded it and I reviewed it and it's pretty much what you talked about back in May when you decided to go with the design, build, operate um, schematic. I um, expect that I will be seeing Mr. Steve, uh, Steve Waite <laughs> from ID Technologies who has been frequenting your board meetings and he'll probably be back. His IDE Technology is one of the large international companies that specialize in this and he's been circling around for a while. I also want to um, bring to your attention again the dangers of fast tracking which is what is happening here. You've already up uh, sped up your completion date for this project from the initial to 2023 date to 2022 in order to qualify for any of these state and federal grants that you want to get for it. And I, I've talked with you before and Director Lather, I sent you information from um, a 2017 Regional Water Quality Control Board meeting in Watsonville, where in the room at this Watsonville City Council Chambers was full of people who had driven out from Cambria because they are were so upset with the problems that a um, recycled water um, plant injection plant in their area was having due to the project being fast tracked under an emergency provision. Um, not being properly managed, not being overseen or anything, and it was causing enormous problems. The uh, legal staff of the Regional Water Quality Control Board said that that plant alone and all of its problems were taking up 90% of her time. So I caution you again into rushing through this process and um, perhaps consulting with the Water Quality Control Board legal staff to find out what exactly has gone awry in Cambria and perhaps you can learn from their lessons and not repeat them here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. Um, I just want to reiterate, I guess, on uh, not fast tracking this through because um, and 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 um, uh, you stressed that that you would look into the Monterey. Somebody said the Monterey um, uh, situation, and there's also in San Luis Obispo there was a huge problem for many years. I don't know how many of you did research on that, but they uh, might be a good reference for you because they've solved a lot of problems. But it doesn't sound like rushing into hiring. <laughs> A whole new group of people is going to be the answer to me. So, hopefully, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually a pretty rigorous selection process that's based on how they meet a very, uh, you know, a whole bunch of criteria related to safety and being able to get the work done effectively. And there's we check references are checked, and um, actually the goal from the beginning for me has been the end of 2022. I think I have said that every time so yeah and I, no. you want to add about meetings i mean you know the, it's it's a prudent process in some ways it's rare that you get to hear uh government agencies moving fast or quickly usually it's the opposite so uh you know we don't sacrifice quality or, or being prudent but we are moving and time is money so that's that's one aspect, but sea, saltwater intrusion, further seawater intrusion, is the other thing we know that is is eating away at us. It's already destroyed part of the aquifer. So time is important, um, but we are not rushing. We're being prudent, but we're moving uh, forthright, efficiently, efficiently. Yeah, uh, the, the, you know, this is you know, th there's been an explosion of uh, these plants being built all around the country, around the world, because it is. Uh, 
a, a solution that whose time has come because there's a shortage of fresh water throughout the whole world, not just in Santa Cruz County. And the plant, so there are, there are a lot of, there's a lot of information on which to build and so people are not re having to reinvent the wheel. If it were all, everything were completely new, prudence and giving time to research each aspect of this process would make a lot of sense, but there is a lot of it, data information and some standard operating procedures on how to go about solving these problems already so that there is, if there is a possibility of just having it be an ordinary build plant to solve our water problem. And Dr. LeHue, I think Melanie wanted to add. I just yeah. wanted to add just a couple things. One, I, I just wanted to clarify that uh, what we're going out for tonight is not a, a, a what they call a DBO project. This is a design build project and then we're also contracting for operations and maintenance, so they are separate. Um, and then I think just for clarification, I know that there's a lot of um, misperceptions on the project being fast-tracked. Um, I know that you guys have also said it, I think, for two things. One is the, the timeline that the board has been trying to get a supplemental water supply, as you guys have been on the board, is going on almost two decades. So um, just Pure Water SoCal project itself, when you voted for us to continue to evaluate and then implement it, it's still eight to 10 years for us from the time that we really started to look at this. So that that is um, a long time to, to still get a project going, um, it, but there's a lot of components and things are moving uh, efficiently. And then in terms of fast tracking, um, the hiring and selection of these uh, teams, this is where we are in this project. And on, in December, when we've completed the environmental review and uh, the board approved the project, our next phase is to start design. And this is wh how we're doing that with this uh, design build firms. I think um, uh, oh. word, word went out to the design build people out there that they've had a lot of lead time. R right. Um, one last point. Sorry, Ron reminded me. Um, you know, we, we are not doing this in a bubble. Um, in fact, I think a lot of agencies um, recognize we're kind of like a little sister. We're a little agency with a big problem and we're looking at others. They're sharing their data. Many of you have toured with us probably at least four to half a dozen sites. Um, most recently, Pure Water San Diego, Orange County, uh, Padre Dam, the Silicon Valley one, Central Coast Blue. And uh, because we are a recipient of the Prop 1 planning grant money, um, there is a technical advisory committee that we meet with that includes regulators uh, from the Department of Drinking Water and the State Water Resources Control Board. So we meet with them um, to go over our project the, uh, in terms of the planning, and they're always asking where we are for the full project. Bruce and then Michelle. Or well, I was going to mention that it's, it's as one commenter mentioned, uh, we, the things that we're doing tonight in this particular item is something we've talked about for a long time. So this is not rush, this is, it's time. And, and I know that being uh, Brown Caldwell has actually talked to a lot of the firms out there about what this project is and what we're looking for. So it's not, that's not gonna be rushed either. I mean, they're already kind of queued up and ready to go, I think, and they're just waiting for this uh, document we're gonna put out. And I think it'll, in fact, the, with the schedule, they have to come back fairly quickly. So. You know, it's going to be those that have, you know, already queued up for this. So I don't think it's rushed at all. I think, you know, in some ways it's slow because the problem is big and it's coming. Michelle? Yeah, I think also the, the deadline, the reason for it has been lost. 2022 is the deadline for us to be able to be. Well, that's a sustainability well, plan. Sustainable. And then 20 years were required and to meet metrics along the way to be sustainable, as uh, uh, Director uh, ja uh, Daniel said, the state has said without a, a doubt that we will come in if we, we're not on target right. to meet it's that. It's not an people. arbitrary number that we just came up with. And um, the other part is the Cambria project is a stormwater, I mean, it's a, um, it's a pond, not groundwater injection, and the issues with it had to do with the pond, not with the product. So there's, do you have something? There's five motions, and 
Bruce and Tom have, have been on the committee before for the selection. Right. And I, I just was wondering, Michelle, whether you... She was on... She and you, I... Oh, you, oh, you two were on the conveyance. On the conveyance, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, so, I mean... I don't know amongst... I, I personally don't think I could do as good a job as you on it, so I'm I'm happy with 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 any of you being on this committee. I don't know about you. Well, I, I kind of feel the same way since you've already started working on these projects, you know, on these evaluations that maybe you should continue on that. Mm -hmm. It's fine with me either way. I'm not, I'm not. I, I'm just asking because we're, we're asked to designate up to two right. directors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know um, what your time commitment to other places are or desire to continue in this type of thing. Well, as for me, this is my top commitment. To We're thinking it's roughly an eight to 10 hour commitment on um, participation, just to give you a heads up. That including reading everything? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Double it's or triple time. that. Trying to, <laughs> trick, <laughs> trying to trick somebody in. <laughs> So, Rochelle, you would like to continue? I'm I'm fine either way. And Bruce, you would I know like I'm to do it? I'd like to do it. Okay. So I'm fine if either Bruce and Rochelle do it or Bruce and I do it. That's fine. Whatever you want. Well, let's have Bruce be involved because he really wants to do it and he's been involved from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. If you're one to continue. I was Rochelle. more open to the conveyance because I have a lot of experience with that. Well, I mean. There's yeah. two things here. So one of you could do one and one of you could do the other if we want. <laughs> or you way. could. Again, you can um, actually make well, a motion to have work with Ron and, and yeah. can do that. But, but we could just like mm -hmm. the operation maintenance might be something you have more. I was going to say uh, that, yeah. Knowledge of, and then I can, be, you know, not that I have knowledge of treatment plants, but I've been through the process. Maybe Bruce and I do that one, and, and Bruce and Rochelle do the Omar. All right, I'd like to make the five motions, motions <laughs> with, yeah. with, okay. with, if you're agreeable to that, yeah. with, with the. the that arrangement with the directors. I, I missed it. Bruce and Rochelle. You clear? Got Bruce you and Rochelle good. for Omar and, <laughs> and Bruce and Tom for the treatment. Yeah. That's okay. Uh -huh. All right. And this, uh, all in favor? Well, there has to be a second first. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, who did the Sorry. first? I, I, I did the, the first. I, the Sorry. other Bruce. Okay. So <laughs> this is a Bruce and Bruce. Uh, first and second, and uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you all. All right, next on the agenda, we have um, RFP for legal counsel. Because Bob is going to ride off into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go ahead and, and take this since Ron just stepped out. Um, item 6.5, yes, is. Uh, we we're a heartfelt memo in terms of um, it's an RFP that we would like the board to approve to put out for us to replace some big shoes. So um, we do have an RFP um, that we would like to issue to look for a, a replacement for Bob to be the district council. Um, and what we are asking and proposing in this agenda item is for us to um, release the RFP select a selection committee and, and evaluate that. And I think, um, obviously, um, you want to take this over? Well, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to open it. And 50 years. I was in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't born. She wasn't born. I know. <laughs> yeah, she probably wasn't born either. Um, you know, what do you say? Good, great guidance, uh, not just legal, but, you know, we use, Bob is the well to go to, and I'm sure we'll say more about that another time. But um, I mean, just at this moment, I think we need to, to point that out there. And so grateful. Thank you. Know. you. So and and that he's helping participate. He he helped develop the uh, RFQ along with uh, Eileen and Melanie so. and Emma. And Emma, yeah. Thank you, Bob. And there's wording in there. Big shoes are in the room. <laughs> big shoes. <laughs> big shoes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I. In terms of a selection committee, I, I know that Carl has had quite a bit of experience with, <laughs> with, with working with, with uh, legal counsels. 
So I, I think she'd be good on that. Good. Uh, anyone? There was one, I, I, since we're the, the last two that haven't been on, aren't on a committee right now, Go then for I it. think Bruce and, Bruce and I should do it. I'm, I'm in favor of that. That's good. Okay. <laughs> and um, any member of the public have any comment on this item? None. So there are. And then who do you. So we're authorizing the general manager to, to pick other staff. Board member. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'll make the motion with Carla and Bruce as the um, Second. selection committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> but, okay. Better say my All right. eye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. No Good. daydreaming. <laughs> all right. So that is all. Thank you. Um, let's see. Thank you for covering that. Let's mm -hmm. see. Six point six. Six. Staffing. Staffing and reorganization. That must be Tracy. That's, That's why me. you're Good evening, board. Um, thank you. Um, uh, tonight we're bringing a proposal for you to take a look at um, increasing staff on a limited term basis. Um, as you know, we've been carrying quite a heavy load with a pretty small uh, workforce. And um, as some of the issues that we were talking about in our earlier proposals, uh, things are ramping up with the Pure Water SoCal program and many of the components of, of the projects um, that are comprised within that program. And so tonight we're recommending to hire a full-time um, uh, limited term and a limited term we're proposing between three and five years um, depending on how long we might need the services of this position to act as a water resources planner to help us in all of the building phases um, from beginning to the final process um, through this job description that was a part of the packet tonight um, I also conducted a um, salary uh, survey to take a look at uh, comparable positions as well as looking our own um, salary allocations and so I'm recommending um, as in the motion um, proposed salary allocation in the mid-management group um, there is potential that this person uh, this position may have oversight of lower level staff and so we wanted to co um, have that capacity built within the position um, we're still working on the details of that staffing plan as we also alluded to tonight and having met with our pure water monterey colleagues and um, getting some best practices from them and having gone through this process so um, that's the recommendation we're making tonight okay questions uh, any members very, of the very, public very clear and and the org org chart at the was yes. nice to see at the yeah. in this as well okay uh, you, you've been doing a great job by the way oh, thank, thank you, you. <laughs> it's nice having her around oh, yeah. big change so no questions. I'll make the motion that we approve the Second. hiring that planner and, and that the salary, the, both motions. Yes. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Aye. Hey, we got all together that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you said something wrong. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So item 6.7 uh, subdivision. This is just a follow-up from the unconditional will serve letter that was approved. I, I could have packaged them together, but I wanted to just keep them separate. But this is the infrastructure agreement that, that we require be executed. Okay. Questions? Trying to make. I'll make a motion. motion. I'll second it. Been moved. Moved. Second. Okay. Put All in. Put into public comment, but I, I probably uh, not need to. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this item? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Motion carries. So I think session. we go to closed session now. Go to we do. Um, Thank you. So Thank you and good night. Good luck. Thank you. you don't need anything on here.